Hey, good morning and welcome to today's session. Uh, we will continue with our discussion on the prophetic ministry. I want to request uh, one person from the class to lead in prayer. This uh, will most likely be our last prophetic uh, session. We will try. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this uh, class that we are about to have, God. But we thank you that you're a God who speaks with us. God, I, I pray that as pastor teaches the deep truths in the Bible, I, we pray that you'll help us to open our mind and heart and listen to it and understand it and put it into practice in our life so that we can be a blessing to others, Lord. What an amazing God you are. How amazing is your love towards us that you want to reveal the things to us, that you want to have a deep relationship with us. We honor you. We adore you, Jesus. We stand in awe of you. I pray that you will give us good Wi-Fi connection throughout the session. Be with us and guide us in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Uh, thank you, Jafina, for praying. Uh, sorry, there was uh, a disconnection, but then I'm back again. So we we'll get into our uh, uh, you know content for today. So so far we've learned about the basics of the prophetic ministry and how to flow in the prophetic anointing. We've also learned about um, interpretation of dreams, visions, uh, and Today, what we're going to do is we are just going to look at the other key aspects um, for us in the ministry uh, when we minister in a congregational setting or when we minister in a in a group, uh, when we minister together as a team, you know, how exactly do we um, go about things and uh, so on and so forth. So now uh, start off with uh, chapter yeah, 12 in our notes here, ministering prophetically. So this talks about how do you deliver. We, we said that uh, interpretation is very key. About it, uh, but you know, sometimes we have different settings, different audiences. So how exactly we go about delivering the prophetic word is a question. So whatever we do, we've been saying that the prophetic word is to glorify God, it is to edify the people, and that shouldn't change. So uh, when we talk about the prophetic ministry, we said that there are different levels. You know, we could operate at the level of the uh, ministry 
the believer as a believer the gift of prophecy uh, we could also be ministering at the level of uh, uh, the grace gift uh, or uh, the uh, what do you say it's it's a ministry gift the prophetic ministry and then uh, you have somebody in the prophetic office so generally when it comes to somebody who is operating in the gifts at the level of a believer we tend to share more with individuals and uh, we've already learned you know how exactly to do it but then when you come uh, to the level of somebody who's in the prophetic ministry there could be other opportunities that these people minister to larger numbers they minister from a pulpit or a stage so how exactly you know could you deliver that message to a large congregation or uh, during a church service uh, these are things to think about so when delivering a message to a congregation uh, if we are delivered to if if we are led to deliver a prophetic word then we need to ask some questions so maybe i am uh, on the stage and i get this prophetic word uh, now this word could be for one person or it could be for a set of people in the congregation or it could be for the entire congregation so uh, i must first check who the message is for so within myself you know i pray and i and i i try to assess okay who should i be delivering this message to uh, then the next question that i would need to ask myself is when should they be told so whoever is the audience when should i tell them should i tell them right now during the service or is it okay for me to share maybe post service uh, sometime so two questions who when and uh, we could also ask uh, you know this question as to how we must deliver this message so in that how a uh, couple of things come in now, should it be done publicly publicly in the sense okay uh, maybe after the service is over if there are a group of people and you share that message openly will that offend the person or should you actually do it privately or uh, you know take time with that person alone and say i have something to tell you and then you know share that message so publicly privately and uh, maybe sometimes there is a need to keep the leader in the loop so if it's a simple prophetic word where you're saying something like uh, uh, god is saying that he's going to bless you he has seen your prayers uh, maybe it's okay to just just make those statements to the person themselves that should be fine but when we are uh, saying something where the oversight of the leader is essential it's good to keep the leader in loop uh, now the leader might also tell us that uh, we can submit the message to them and they will share it with the concerned person so it could work that way as well now especially when it comes to a message for the church body uh, then we must seek the permission of the leader to share that word so it's always good to just submit it to the leader and the leader might say uh, god is speaking to us at this time and uh, he has a very uh, pertinent message for us so you know leader or pastor can you please go ahead and share this with the entire church family so when we have the permission it's okay to stand up you know at the pulpit and go ahead and share that message but otherwise uh, we we may we may not know when exactly the pastor chooses to tell the church family but we give it to him that that's how we do it now there are many times uh, that we may have seen that prophetic uh, during prophetic ministry people are called out from the congregation so uh, generally uh, it would be by name or by pointing at someone uh, you know uh, or or something so they may say that uh, i see somebody they are like this 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 when a person relates to what is being spoken then they they say okay that's me and uh, the prophetic word is delivered so is it okay to 
call people out uh, it's fine it's fine to call people out uh, because we know that the prophetic word is to edify the people it is to exhort the people so uh god can get their attention god can uh, strengthen them you know th through these methods and there are many ministries in which i've seen such things happen and in fact in some of the meetings uh, it was uh, sort of uh, you know unthinkable that uh, uh, even my name was called out and i was really like oh how does he know me but it's amazing how god can actually work in this way so it's a beautiful thing but having said that uh when we go to new congregations it's always a different setting and culturally um uh, you know uh, uh, uh culturally and in different ways logistically the way they have arranged themselves uh, the structure of that uh, the format of that meeting uh, it could all, it could all be very different from what we do so we have to be very sensitive to how we go about doing this uh, as far as possible keep the leader in the loop and also while calling people out we must make sure that the message which we are delivering will be uplifting so if it's a corrective word if it's a uh, you know if it's a, a very personal word it may not make sense to tell it out publicly uh, because it will bring more uh, embarrassment for the person than encouragement now even in the way we go about calling people out right uh, we have to be sensitive now maybe we have casual uh, setup uh, but the people over there expect a certain kind of uh, or an honorable way in which the the minister of god uh, addresses them so if we say something like hey you or something you know uh, when we address people like that they may not like it though the word we are sharing is genuine uh, the way we are doing it is embarrassing the people so uh, it's all about being sensitive being sensitive to the timing to the culture to the uh, you know the uh, format of the meeting the the person over there and all so don't embarrass people don't uh, humiliate people uh, by you know, bringing things out that uh, they may actually not like or uh, unfortunately uh, in the prophetic ministry there have been instances where false accusations uh, have been spoken in public in the in the guise of prophetic ministry but it's actually meant to put somebody down it's actually meant to hurt them uh, so these are all things that happen and uh, we want to stay away from that uh, so let's be careful you know in the in the congregation setting about these matters okay uh, now when it comes to delivering personal prophecy I mentioned uh, we have to think this if there's a message for a particular person how should I do it Should I do it in a group setting call them out during the service or meet with them later on uh, so remember we said that in a prophetic word a lot of things get said but then there are a lot of things which go unsaid uh, so while giving that word we may uh, not have all the background of the individual so to apply the prophetic word this individual might need the wisdom of god we as a traveling minister will go say the word and we'll be gone but you know that person has to work with that prophetic word apply it and uh, see if it's a genuine prophetic word see the results of it so what happens is uh, in these kind of scenarios it's good to have the pastor involved or a leader involved because then the local pastor will be able to provide the future guidance that that let's say it's a young person Okay, and they have this prophetic word about their career about their ministry so we give the word and we go away but the local pastor knows uh, in a sense they know oh okay what is this minister saying which part of the prophecy relates to this which part of the prophecy relates to that okay th these are the uh, uh, you know kind of practical steps that the youth uh, takes to needs to take now if 
that doesn't happen, uh, let's say the young person is very enthusiastic about ministry. They might, if, if we just give them a word uh, saying, OK, I see you, you are ministering in China, and then we are gone. You know, that person will do everything they, they know to get to China, to make it happen tomorrow. Right, so they may make some wrong decisions of quitting their job and uh, you know uh, selling their things. And once uh, they are deep into it, it's very difficult to reverse decisions like this. Uh, which is why, for personal prophecy, involve the leader, engage the pastor. Okay, uh, and then you could actually uh, that would be the right way to do it. Uh, sometimes it, these matters are very sensitive. I don't know whether I shared with your batch, but uh, I remember once we had gone for a mission trip and we were praying for uh, uh, a particular lady. And two of us were praying for this lady. And it was very different, the kind of pictures that we saw. Uh, I uh, personally, I saw a clock which had stopped. Uh, so. The sense I had is like time is going by, but the clock has stopped. Okay, so then I I could understand that it's like a passage of time, but probably not a useful passage of time. Uh, so I didn't understand. I just didn't understand what it was. So uh, the other person got some pictures. We were sharing it with this lady, and turns out she's a new believer. And she was also not very clear on, on you know, the uh, standards of the Bible as far as marriage is concerned and all. So uh, long story short, she was living in with the person. She was not married to the person. She had no intention of changing that setting. Uh, so it was a really a sticky situation because the prophetic word is revealing this about her. And we had no idea. We got into delivering the message. And then we realized, oh, this is what it is. Uh, and so the moment we realized that uh, this person person wouldn't know how to use what we are talking about unless a pastor guides her. So uh, we spoke to the pastor's wife uh, and we just requested her to come and we said, ma'am, uh, could you please talk to her? And in a very sensitive way, thankfully, the pastor's wife, very mature uh, lady, she was like, OK, I understand. And uh, you know, in a very gentle, nice way, she was just sharing it. Uh, another good thing is once we came away, they can now guide the individual. So you see, sometimes prophetic words are like that. And uh, so just of uh, OK, calling out names, telling them what to do from, from stage and going away. Uh, Let's, let's think about see that ministry that pastor has built over years. And whatever we do, whether as a prophet or whether as an apostle or a teacher, maybe we are invited as a teacher to go to that uh, congregation and serve. We have to think. They have built a work. Whatever I do should help the work continue, should strengthen the work which has been going on. Not do anything uh, which you know remotely insensitive to uh, either the leader or the pastors. I think we have to really uh, uh, settle in our hearts and uh, work towards it. So even in the prophetic ministry, that's how it works. Now coming to uh, ministering to political leaders. Now we have seen that uh, prophecies were given to uh, kings and. Uh, people in authority, and it made a difference in their lives. Today, does God use us to minister to people in authority, especially political leaders? We would say yes. Um, if we look back at the life of Apostle Paul, uh, he was ministering. He was speaking. He was testifying. He was witnessing to uh, kings and commanders and uh, you know people in charge uh, of of great responsibilities uh, in the nation in the in the regions so it hasn't stopped it's not just an old testament thing but it happens even today and we know that men and women of god can give a word to political leaders so when there's a word, how is it that we should deliver? That's the question we are asking. So a couple of things we must keep in mind is we must come from a place of sincerity. So while we share the prophetic word to everyone uh, and you know we are okay with that, 
when we share with political leaders or somebody, let's say, they have great influence, they have a lot of money, human nature is such that you get tempted to maybe flatter the person because flatter. How can we flatter in prophecy? It can happen. That we could say all kinds of nice things. Uh, you know, God is going to raise you up and God is going to give you a lot of treasures and God is going to give you favor with this one. That so many things you can say about which so the tendency is when we see somebody who is influential we could err on the side of uh, you know flattery but we really need to check our hearts is it genuine let's say a uh, uh, a chief minister is coming to your Sunday service and they are part of the Sunday service uh, and you're praying uh, and you're ministering in the spirit. Uh, you get big, long prophetic words for many people. But for the chief minister, let's say you just get one word or two words uh, or maybe some simple words, right? That uh, God is saying he will, uh, he sees your, uh, he sees your prayers or uh, God is, is uh, his hand is upon your future. That's it. Right? So the, the problem is people feel that if they do that, then they may not have the favor of the leader or the, let's say uh, at, at some point in time, they need some help from the political leader. They may not get it. Now, we better make this person very, very happy. So that is something that we must stay away from, whether it's a political leader, influence uh, in the book of Jesus read about this. We read, uh, James says, uh, people are from different strata of society. Uh, and he especially points out somebody poor, somebody rich in the same assembly gathering. He says, if somebody is very rich with a lot of rings, uh, would you favor uh, and would you neglect the poor? Don't do that. James, uh, you know, Apostle James talks about that. So in the same way, because somebody is a person of influence, giving them a better property than uh, somebody who is poor, neglecting them because they don't look, uh, you know, rich enough or famous enough. That's so sad if, as Christians, we do things like that. So that is something we have to be careful about. Then the next thing is do not compromise. Okay, whatever God is revealing. Again, we may have a tendency. What will what will they think? What will uh, suppose? Let's say it's a corrective word. Let's say it's a there's a wisdom we can apply to the delivery of the word but uh, it's important it's coming from the lord you have to go ahead and release it appropriately so don't compromise uh, speak with wisdom that of course we have uh, talked about it we said that uh, sometimes when we have to deliver some uh, serious uh, messages uh, particularly you know God's judgment or correction. There's a way of putting it without, you know, without offending the person. So obviously the message will have offend them anyway. Uh, but the presentation can be dealt with very smartly. So uh, that is something to keep in mind. Uh, and uh, the next thing is, do not seek political favors. And this is not just for political people, but uh, influential people in general. We must think that now that God is moving uh, by his spirit in this area, uh, I can use it to get rich or I can use it to get a piece of land. Or, you know how people tend to think. So we need to avoid all these tendencies. Okay. Yeah, we'll move on to the next subject here. Any uh, questions? Okay, uh, any questions or if you've ha had any experiences in a congregational setting of receiving a word or speak? Yes, sir, success? No, 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 I'm okay. 
Uh, You're okay. I wanted to I wanted to say something regarding to submission of the assignment. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah. Uh, though I have not really been chance to do my assignments, and I know today is the end of the day. I, is it possible for me to submit it? Maybe uh, because this is five. This is five, almost five a.m. Uh, can I give me an opportunity to submit it before nine o'clock this morning, Nigeria time? Nine o'clock, as in uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, it, it's at the end of today for us, right? Indian time. Okay. So you so still I'll... have time. You still have time. It's all right. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. All right. So we'll move on then. Uh, we come to the power of prophetic teams. How do these teams really help? We've seen how in uh, the Book of Acts, uh, through the Church of Antioch, you had prophets come over. And when they were ministering, when the team actually uh, served there, uh, they were able to strengthen the church. Uh, so it's nice to work it's for us somewhere. We might think that it's only about one person who is called into the ministry of a prophet. And uh, we may not have an idea that a set of people, a group of leaders or a group of believers even can actually minister the prophetic together. But it's really helpful. And can it be done? Yes, it can be done. It can be done in an orderly way. In 1 Corinthians 14, um, Paul gives instructions to use the gift, particularly that of prophecy, in a proper manner. So he, he says things like, let two or three prophets speak, let the others judge. Why? Because as a team. There are many people who are flowing in the same gift. And so they can do it in, in such a way that there is greater accuracy. Now, uh, he also says, but if anything is revealed to another who sits by, let the first keep silent, for you can all prophesy one by one that all may learn and all may be encouraged. This is from verses 29 to 31 of First Corinthians 14. So... <laughs> We see here that people can minister together uh, and the order in which they can minister is ideally one by one. So based on, um, re maybe everyone has revelation and uh, everyone wants to speak, but Paul is saying, you do it one by one. So we give everyone a chance. Now, what if there is a word which, let's say, uh, others also have a witness for. That word can actually be built up further. So let's say one person says, you know, I see that God is using you mightily in your work. Uh, and that's about it. That's the revelation they got. Another person also got the same area about the work of this individual. And they add another line maybe and they say that, yes, uh, God is going to use you, and I see him opening doors for you uh, in uh, in the UK, right? So what's happening? There's one word, but together as a team, uh, it, it's sort of it's sort of coming out uh, in its in its fullness and what God wants to actually speak to that person. So we can work together as a team, and uh, that way uh, it gets done even better. So. Uh, some some um, good things about ministering as a team would be, as I told us now, double confirmation. So if the message is along the same lines, we get more confidence that, yes, I'm hearing it correct. Remember, I, I shared about that experience with another teammate. So we both were talking about the same subject. So uh, I remember another time when we were ministering again in one of our missions uh, trips uh, this person she we just closed our eyes for a couple of seconds and uh, then you know i asked her what do you see she said i see a waterfall and i think i saw a river so both of us saw water at the same time 
and uh, <clears throat> that is a confirmation and you know we got the picture of the spirit the holy spirit sometimes uh, the description that god gives is through uh, the picture of water or maybe even fire or wind but in our case it was water so we both knew oh god is talking about the outpouring of the holy spirit so there's a double confirmation so when we are flowing in the prophetic the confidence or the assurance can be really uh, strong when we have prophetic team so we must encourage prophetic teams uh, pieces of the puzzle i shared how you know one person uh, says one thing another person says another thing but it's like a jigsaw puzzle you see that the picture is forming as each one releases the word which they are doing right so that's again a beautiful in which prophetic teams can flow when we are in a group setting somehow the stirring uh, of the prophetic gift is uh, you could say you know it it kind of stirs faster uh, if one person is flowing you just find that uh, others are also flowing uh, uh, just in the same way so it's nice for us to create opportunities for groups of people to minister together and that way the flow uh, will be better and uh, the experience also the prophetic experience will be better so i'm not saying that it plays uh, individual ministry with team ministry but i'm saying if there is an opportunity for team ministry and you have people who understand the prophetic why not it's nice to have uh, a team work together the flow is better now uh, checks and balances so talking about this teams working together uh, i remember particularly post covid when our uh, services were restarting here in bangalore city uh, we did not have all our locations open because of the permissions and restrictions which were still on so we could open our main location and in the main location also there were restrictions that only so many people can come and all that <clears throat> but having said that uh, one good thing is pastors instead of ministering at different locations we could all go and gather uh, it's very difficult to have all the pastors together right but during those months it was possible because we were still connecting with the central service and uh, you know people were watching live stream so nearly every sunday we did prophetic ministry as a team so after the service after the sermon uh, whoever is ministering would call us up and uh, the pastors will flow begin to flow one person will say one thing and another person will say one thing it was so beautiful to see how the the spirit was actually flowing and how people were getting words uh, and that that's so nice so even in a church A cong in a congregation, as a pastoral team or a ministry team, if we develop people like this and then they begin to minister, uh, that will be beautiful and it will be a great blessing. Quite a few testimonies came out of uh, those ministry times when you know people flowed in the gift of prophecy. So it's very useful. Checks and balances. Uh, this simply means that when people are flowing together. we can call foul if uh, something is wrong as a as a an individual yes i do my best to be accurate to provide a prof genuine prophetic word but if something goes wrong as a another person who understands the prophetic gift they can correct me or they can uh, it's not really like a correction correction but at least uh help me get back on track right uh, so let's say say that water interpretation that i that i shared so i'm seeing water and the other person is seeing a waterfall uh maybe i think it is uh, only what is god talking about god is talking about direction in life because there's a river flowing <clears throat> but 
when that other person also gets a waterfall, then as I'm interpreting it, I also think about it. Oh, okay, God is saying the same thing. He's talking about the same matter. So what can the interpretation be? So it really helps us align to the right interpretation and the right uh, delivery. So uh, that way it's very helpful. And uh, also, you know, we, we can be mutually accountable right we can be mutually uh, accountable uh, to one another and it really causes the development of the prophetic gift in us so prophetic teams <clears throat> there's uh, uh, something known as corporate covering in our notes here uh, but that simply means that it's like a safe umbrella uh, of protection over a group of people when it comes to the operation of the gifts of the spirit. So what does it mean? Uh, it means that uh, the whole group, the whole group, they are trained in the basics and other doctrines and the methods, right, as to how one should flow in the prophetic gift. So if, let's say, one of us goes off we um, we are in error in the message or uh, if if the source of what is being prophesied is uh, a deceiving spirit and not necessarily uh, you know what god wants the whole team is there to kind of correct those those issues uh, and uh, help uh, be pure as God really wants it. So it, it helps. It's very, it's very protective uh, for us to minister in teams and uh, have this sort of a corporate covering. And also the the development of the gifts will happen better because there's also opportunity to to make our mistakes, to learn from our mistakes, so on and so forth. So it's a safe environment that way as well, and people will grow. Yeah, so we must encourage these prophetic teams. So where can we have these prophetic teams? We can have uh, prophetic prayer teams. Uh, one church that uh, I used to go to, this was while I was studying, uh, and I was not in Bangalore, in another city. That church, they had a prophetic prayer team. It was something different that they were doing, actually. So they had some people on the prayer team. And they usually had seats somewhere in the front. Uh, they would keep a notebook with them. And during service, they would uh, sketch uh, images that they're getting. But all in the context of prayer, uh, not so much delivering a message, but uh, what the Lord is saying to the church, what the Lord is saying to the people. So more about they'll receive the message they'll write it if it's a scripture or this or whatever it is and then they'll just be praying for the service as the service is taking place so that was a unique concept i've never seen things like that uh, but yeah prophetic prayer team that manner or it could simply be a set of people who are praying for the church they are praying for the city they're praying for the nation and uh, whatever we discussed about prophetic prayer remember we hear from god and we pray that through that is prophetic prayer so they're not just praying oh okay everything in scripture is good so we'll pray no but they are listening to god the now message and they are praying that through and they see a powerful manifestation of the power of god so that can happen prophetic evangelism teams this is when people uh go into streets uh, or just a normal you know everyday life you're just going about uh, doing your doing your things but a word for somebody right you have a word for somebody and you're asking the lord lord give me a word and help me to speak that word to a person to so evangelism when we share that word the person is awakened <clears throat> I remember this one testimony of a friend of mine at the workplace where uh, he was talking to his colleague and he did not have any idea about what that colleague is actually going through in their personal life. Uh, but maybe something like, I don't remember the exact setting, but like a coffee break or, or some such time. While talking to his colleague, he just said, 
I feel like God is saying, be fruitful and multiply. Okay. I know it sounds so weird that you tell your colleague, be fruitful and multiply, but he did it. He just was like, is it okay? Can I tell you? And then he said it. Uh, but it turns out this colleague of his was, he and his wife did not have children. And they really were praying for children uh, or wanting children. They were not believers. They wanted children. But once this word was released, uh, uh, you know, things started moving fast and that person, uh, their family actually had a, uh, a child. So you see how God ministers. It would just be one word, but what does it do? It turns the hearts of the people towards God. Oh, there is a God who knows what I'm going through. So prophetic evangelism teams, and we try to do this even here uh, when we go out for outreaches. Uh, if you have a word uh, or if there is a dream that person has had, you try to interpret it. So the point is that we want to draw them to God through what we are doing. So that is one way to use this gift. Uh, prophetic worship teams, this I'm sure you all understand. So as a team, you flow together. Somebody gets the word, somebody gets the music, and then you know, you're know you just uh, uh, singing in, in uh, Seeing the praises of God. Then prophetic creative teams. Creative teams, there's the list is endless. You can have people painting words, you can have people sketching prophetic words, you can have dancers, you can have um, you know, drama, skit. Uh, so expressions, all kinds of expressions. Uh, we can have creative teams, and as a there's a real thrust for this in our current day uh, scenario as well it's happening right now and people are understanding the worth of such expressions so that can happen prophetic marketplace teams so this is when teams get together and they are willing to be led by god and god gives them a word in their area of work let's say entertainment or uh, education politics business you know how wonderful it would be and it is happening to some extent i do know of groups that pray and ask god and uh, you know they they really want to bless their line of work so uh, that is that is a, a sort of a team and then prophetic city transformation teams so city transformation team is also now very strategic they hear from god they pray things through and they come up with ideas or strategies which are going to impact a region for God. I don't know how many of uh, us know of uh, uh, major programs that have been done uh, for cities and uh, states. Uh, I, I'm not saying this one particular program was profiting, but uh, you've heard of that thing. Uh, not getting the word right now. Built, no, no, what is that? Do you know there's this uh, campaign which they run in the city with books and everything, books and uh, banners? Experience change. Yeah, so, so a name like that, experience change, uh, or uh, I don't know the words, but the title is like that. So what they did in that particular campaign is that they found testimonies of uh, people who believe in Jesus and they made banners of those people. So they put it all over the, the city, okay? even on buses, on uh, uh, you know bus stands. Um, everywhere you look, there would be banners that would say, OK, there is a change. This person has gone through a change. And there would be a phone number over there. So you need to call up that phone number. And when you call up that phone number, they would ask you that, OK, what do you want? Because in the banner, there's also the advertisement for a book. Like there is a free book. If you want, you take it. So generally, people would call and they would say, uh, we want this free book. And at the back end, you had a lot of churches come together. And they were the ones who were taking these calls and mobilizing their people to go and deliver the books. So that was a really nice campaign because the campaign ran for about a month or so, but it was very intense. All the churches of the city were a part of it. And uh, you know, different ones of us, even here at, at our church, we all went as volunteers. We went to people's homes. We would just get the addresses 
uh, of those who have called up get together in twos. Of course, the area we would pick, like, okay, give me some addresses in this area. But still, it was very unknown. We would just take the bus and go. You don't even know who that person is. You would just go and we would say, you had requested for a book. So we are giving you the book. And that book had the testimonies, like proper testimony of how people encountered Jesus, how their lives were transformed, and why they believe in Jesus. And of course, towards the end, the gospel was in, in that book. So it was very simple. We would just give them the book and come off. But if they still want to keep in touch and come to church, so that was a way in which we could connect with the new people in the city. So, you know, things like this, God can give us strategies. I mean, I never thought uh, somebody could run a campaign in the city of this magnitude. So I'm just giving you, uh, you know, one example. But city transformation so many things can be done which can impact the city uh, in different ways so these ideas come from god uh, if when god is speaking we can take it and we can also go ahead and apply it and see the changes so uh fine uh, class we will stop with this and we will come back after a break, uh, my sincere apologies for all the technical issues that we've had today. Uh, but I hope you know it hasn't hindered the learning. So, okay, let's uh, stop for now. We'll be back in 10 minutes and continue. Thank you.